To get into problems, I need to introduce valence. Valence is the number of electrons in an atom's outermost shell. All atoms want eight electrons in that shell. This is called the octet rule. The groups with A in them all have the number of electrons in their group name. Group 1A has one electron, and so on. Over here in blue, I have written out how many bonds the rest of the A groups make. Just make note that in 3A, they only make three bonds, not five bonds. And also make note that phosphorus, which is in group 5A, normally that group can make three bonds. Phosphorus can occasionally make five. But you don't have to worry too much about that for now. The transition metals in the middle, you won't really deal with in organic, so you don't, it gets hairy in there, so you don't really worry about those. And your professor or SI may get into a quantum physics tangent about orbitals sinking and becoming one, but I just told you everything you really need to know about valence, so just use that time to catch up on your text messages. My videos from here on in organic will be based more on problems rather than on lecture. I don't feel for organic, it's really something that you can sit and listen to in lecture, so we'll focus uh, primarily on problems from here on out. So here are the learning goals for chapter one. Given a possible formula for a molecule, determine how many atoms of a specific element would be present. Now for these problems, you definitely want to keep your periodic table handy with how many bonds each atom can make that we looked at just a moment ago. So what are the likely formulas for the following substances? Looking at A, G, E, C, L. Now germanium is in the same group as carbon, and all elements in the group 4A can make four bonds. Chlorine is in 7A, it can only make one bond. So this arrangement that I show here, with germanium surrounded by four chlorines, is the answer, so it would be G, E, C, L, 4. For B, you have aluminum is AL, and how many hydrogens can fit on there? Well, aluminum can make three bonds, and hydrogen can only make one bond, so ALH3 is the clear choice. For C, we have CH, how many hydrogens are fitting there? CL2. For C, I wrote that out. Carbon is always your central atom, and carbon can make four bonds. Two are already used by the chlorine which is given to you there. There's two chlorines in there, so the other two can be filled up by hydrogen. For D, silicon is in the same group as carbon, and so it can make four bonds, so SiF4, fluorine can fill all four slots, and for E, CH3, and H, you can make little tables like this if it helps you out. So what I used to do in early chem, uh, carbon can make four bonds, nitrogen can make three bonds. Now, you have a nitrogen already connected, and you can see here from the formula that the hydrogen is connected to the nitrogen, and that CH3 is its own standalone guy. So we have our CH3 here, this is called a methyl group by the way, and your nitrogen here. Now nitrogen can only make, well nitrogen can make three bonds and carbon can make four bonds. So three of carbon's bonds are already taken up by hydrogen. That fourth bond will be filled by nitrogen, and you can only you know, there's only one slot left, so you have to put that hydrogen in there. Now generally, carbon is your central molecule, and when you look at these formulas, they kind of tell you what the molecule looks like in itself. So if I was going to switch colors here. So if you're coming here, you can see that CH3 is its own standalone guy. The CH3 is attached to the nitrogen, and the hydrogen is also attached to the nitrogen. So get some of the cues on your intuition from the actual formula. Given a structure of an organic molecule, fill in any missing valence electrons. Now for this, you just want to remember your octet rule, that every atom wants to have eight electrons. So write the line, line bone structures for the following substances and show all non-binding electrons. That's probably bond structures, not bone structures. So CHCl3 is chloroform. You know that chlorine can make four bonds. Hydrogen and chlorine can make one bond, so you put them in there. Now each one of these lines here on the line bond structure represents two electrons. 
So chlorine is, well, carbon in the center is happy with eights. Hydrogen only wants two. So that's an exception to the octet rule. Hydrogen only wants two, so that's satisfied. And then the chlorines, you already have two bonds from the line bond, and the rest you can just put as dots around them. These are called Lewis dot structures, and each dot is one single electron. So two electrons that aren't part of this connection, those are called lone pairs. So that satisfies the octet rule for all of those, and we can move on to the next, B. H2S is called hydrogen sulfide. Sulfur can only make two bonds, so you, hydrogen fills those, H2S. And now sulfur wants eight, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two lone pairs. 4C, CH3, NH2. You have the intuition on these by now. CH3 is usually its own standalone guy, standalone guy. And we saw this molecule earlier. Here's the NH2, it's its own standalone guy. It is just, just remember that nitrogen has two lone pairs on it normally, same with and sulfur normally has two lone pairs on it. I mean, nitrogen only has one known pair, sulfur is two. And for D, CH3Li, methyl lithium. Again, take your cues from the formula. CH3 is its own guy, and carbon makes four bonds. Three are already eaten up by hydrogen, so lithium takes the last one. Given the structure of an organic molecule, determine the bond angles. Draw a line bond structure for propane, CH3, CH2, CH3. Predict the value of each bond angle and indicate the overall shape of the molecule. Now, here's a little table. Memorize this. Single bonds are sp3 and are at 109.5 degrees. That's called a tetrahedral angle. Double bonds are sp2, and they are 120 degree angles. Triple bonds are sp. These are 180 degree angles, also called the linear angle. So single is 3, double is sp2, 120 degrees. You can see the 2's in here. Triple bonds are sp, 180 degrees. So the degree of sp goes down by 1 with each bond, and the angle becomes more linear. So here we have propane, CH3, CH2, CH3, and that's how you would write it with a line bond structure. Now here these are all single bonds, so they're all sp3. They're all at 109.5 degrees, so the overall shape is tetrahedral. Going on to the next one. Given a structure of an organic molecule, identify a given atom as sp, sp2, or sp3 hybridized. So propene is CH3, CH. CH2. Here you have a CH3, which is usually its own guy. CH is double bonded to CH2. So to do these, you go by the bond that carbon is touching. So for carbon 1, which I labeled as 1 here, this carbon is only touching single bonds, so that's sp3 tetrahedral, just like the CH3 usually is. Carbon number 2 here is touching a double bond, so you just go by the biggest bond. C2 here is touching a double bond, so that's sp2 at 120 degrees, and cp3 is also touching, well, C, not cp3, carbon 3 is also touching a double bond, so that's sp2, 120 degrees. Propene, or propine, carbon 1, CH3, that's going to be an sp3. Carbon 2 is touching a triple bond, so that's going to be linear, sp. Carbon 3 is also touching a triple bond, so that's also linear. The other two carbons are touching triple bonds. They're both sp and linear. Moving on, given a skeletal structure for a molecule, determine the number of hydrogens attached to each carbon. This is called a skeletal structure. On here, each line represents a bond, and at the end of each line represents a carbon. If at the end of a line you see a group, like this says OH right here, and this says NHCH3, if there's a group at the end of a line, there is no carbon there, so there's no carbon here. 
So yeah, line is a bond where the lines intersect. Those are carbons, which I colored in with little black dots. If there's a second line in the middle, that's a double bond. And that's really all you need to know for skeletal structures. So given a skeletal structure, determine the number of hydrogens attached to each carbon. So you already know that carbon makes four bonds. So just look at the number of bonds at each carbon. And the difference between that number and the number four is how many hydrogens are there. And that's just because carbon makes four bonds. So here at this carbon, you see you have one, two, three bonds. So there's only one hydrogen there covering, filling that fourth slot. Let's back out. Here at this carbon, you have four bonds. You have one, two, three, and then this hydroxyl group here is the fourth bond, so there's no hydrogens there. This is an identical structure. This structure here is the same as this structure on top, so that has one, and you can see the intuition on the rest. Here is two bonds because you have one, well, two hydrogen because you have one bond there and one bond here, so there's only two hydrogens at the end. Now, if you have a stick hanging out, like let's say you had one here, that would be considered a CH3, and there would be three hydrogens at the end because there's only, there's just one carbon hanging out with only one bond attached to that carbon. So we'll back up there. And this is adrenaline, also known as epinephrine. Epinephrine and adrenaline are the same thing, it's a hormone. And you can also guess the actual formula for this by counting the carbons. So you have six carbons in this ring, seven, so yeah, well, six carbons in this ring, this is seven, this is eight. And if you look at this group here, there's a carbon there. So even though it's not part of the chain, there's one there, so that's nine. You just add up your hydrogens. There's a hydrogen here, there's a hydrogen here, and then you count up the hydrogens in the middle. You And also including, I must covered them all up, but you would also include your nitrogen and your three oxygens from here, here, and your oxygen there. It's kitty stuff. You can do that. So moving on. Given a skeletal structure for a molecule, determine the molecular formula. We already did that above, so we'll just forget that point. Draw a molecule in 3D using a dash wedge structure. Now, you'll only really see this with CH3, which is called a methyl group. CH3s, for future reference, will nor when you have chains of carbons and they look like this in a skeletal structure, the carbon at each end is usually a CH3. So that'll show a tetrahedral structure, where a wedge, which is this guy right here, represents a hydrogen coming out of the plane towards your face. The solid line here is in the plane of the page. And the let's switch colors here, and the dashed line is going into the page, so that's going away from your face. When you look at some pictures of a stick and ball model, you'll see exactly what I mean and why this is useful. You'll only ever really see this in the first, maybe the second chapter of an OCHEM, because after that you're only dealing with skeletal structures, and those will just be wavy lines with little branches coming off, and you'll never really see this dash, wedge, dotted line stuff again. You just have to know it for the first exam for most organic chem courses. Now, given a definition of a bonding theory, identify the theory as molecular orbital or valence bond. Obvious molecular is obvious. It shows the electrons around the entire molecule, so that's molecular. Valence bond is valence. It shows the electrons around an atom. So valence deals with an atom, molecular deals with the entire molecule. Here's a table I made. Memorize it. You have hydrogen making one bond, carbon making four, nitrogen makes three and has one lone pair, that is very important. Two, oxygen makes two bonds, has two lone pairs, very important. The halogens make one bond and have three lone pairs, also very important. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to be awesome.